Hey, this is Karen with Over the Artsy Moon, and I'm coming on to do a little bit of a background painting with you today. So we're using some colors, um, mostly greens here. I've got a dark green, kind of a chartreuse lime green. I've got a dark, uh, bright green. Then this one is called a drift from folk art, a medium yellow, and then some white. And I did a post on my page earlier today and I'm just going to grab some white and some of this green. And it was all about um, picking between two sunflower paintings. And one of them was uh, more like a painterly style, a little bit. I'm going to grab some of the blue and I'm just uh, making these little strokes. And it was all about um, kind of um, letting loose with your strokes. and. Some people liked this light background, but I thought I would do more of a dark background just to show you how that could work. So let me just refresh something here real quick on the page. And if you're coming on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. If you have done backgrounds before that you absolutely love, maybe you love just the black background, but you can take these little colors and almost do like an impasto um, kind of painting where you see the paint strokes, you're not blending everything in and it's kind of fun. So I did say I was going to do it a little darker in here. I'm going really light. <laughs> so, um, kind of funny. Hey, hello, Marta. How are you today? Nice to see you. So we're just doing some little paint strokes. I'm going to leave a little bit of that black border. This is a painting I was getting ready for my artsy main paint club. And, um, I just, could think of so many different backgrounds we could do for this, but um, it could be fun to do a, like a dark background. I'm going to do more of that bright green in here. And I don't know if anybody here, here has ever used in, uh, like a palette knife at all. I'm sure you have. Um, this would be one way to do it. You could do use the palette knife to get this these thick layers on here. But basically you're, you don't want to blend all your paint strokes in. You're just going to layer and we'll keep on layering in here. And it's not looking great yet, but we will get there, okay? So you see the blending that happens right on the canvas, and it's kind of fun. And um, I like this style because it's very loose, it's very free. And if you go too far onto something, like if you um, go right onto your, um, your sunflowers there and then cover them up, you can always come back in with the, the black later to find those edges again. Okay, so we're just coming in and as I get farther out, I'm going to make my strokes go toward the edge. So I'm going to make this a little darker. Just pull these darker strokes on top a little bit, this hunter green. What's everybody doing today? Anybody painting or are you all busy doing um, other things today? And um, to also tell me where you're watching from. I'm just always curious to see what everybody's doing. I know it's kind of in the middle of the day and I didn't um, say I was coming on. I just decided I would do it. Okay. So I understand if uh, it's not too busy in here yet, but we will be. I can't wait to read all your comments. So tell me what your favorite background color is, where you're watching from, and um, what you're doing today. And uh, Marta says, I love the effect of the black paint on the back, or the paint on the black background. Yeah, it is so pretty, right? And I like to have a little bit of it showing through so that it is not completely covering. Otherwise, you might as well just have a white canvas, right? So you can come around these little edges here and just layer. You still want to see some of the other paint you already put down. As I go in the middle, it's just not as exciting because I love how it looks when you get to the outside. Hey, Cam, nice to see you. She says, I love the way you put your gorgeous face in the flat. I know. I thought that was, I didn't know if anybody was going to notice. Of course you did, right? But um, I, well, that was nice of you for the compliment, but I just thought that would be a little fun touch, right? You want to see the flower without me in it? That's what it looks like. <laughs> but I just, uh, I'm being silly as usual. <laughs> yeah, it does pop for sure, Kim, with the black, but um, this is also going to give it like a, a lot of movement. This one is less movement. It does still have all of those little marks on there. You see all the little paintbrush marks, 
but because they think it's so light, um, it's not quite as um, dramatic maybe as the other one I had posted on my page earlier. So it is fun to just to play with all these things and see what is going to be the most effective and also to find out what your style is because everybody has a different style. So I'm going to grab hunter green, some of that that chartreuse lime green color too, a little bit of that aqua color and I can um, to so it's not like blobs of color I can also come back over where it's partially dry and lay on some color but see I'm never covering it up completely so and also if you hold your paintbrush way back here it's going to make you a lot more loose when you get closer to the flowers yeah you might want to plant your pinky a little bit and just come in but don't be overly stressed about it like I said you can always go back later and um, just fix up any little areas that you want okay so this is a lot of aqua here in the corner and I love aqua anybody who knows me knows I love aqua but I also want to have it kind of cohesive with the other areas so I'm going to bring some of those in and I can always go back and adjust it at the end and see what happens. So some of you coming on are like, oh boy, I don't love that where that's going, but stick with me, okay? Stick with me and we'll see how this goes. All right. I know it's a beautiful summer day here and probably a lot of you are outside doing things. So if you're here with me, I love that you're saying hi. I know you got stuff going on. Oh, I put a little white in there. That looks good too, right? A little pop of white here and there. Uh, we'll just see. I'm a little bit all over the place here. Let me go back to my bright green. I'm going to put my, I got to remember to put my hand way back. And um, so this is a way to keep it loose, keep it fun, um, bring some energy and movement to your painting. All right. And um, who thinks they're going to do something like this? Have you guys done anything like this where you've kept the layers of paint on your um, canvas or do you like a little a little smoother texture what's your preference so I'm just gonna keep on adding here and I'm leaving a little black border sort of like a negative um, effect negative and positive effect on the canvas so you leave that little border and then it saves you a lot of energy and stress some people have a hard time doing the lines later so it's just an easy way to add that in and I try to do that so um, anybody who's more of a beginner painter, it takes a little bit to get that idea in your head, but then it's super easy later when you're finishing it because it's almost finishing itself, if that makes sense. So if that makes sense, give me a little thumbs up just so I know I'm, I'm not talking to myself and um, you're getting it. Okay, love seeing everybody's comments and I see some of them in my paint club so I appreciate you guys popping on too and saying hi I can't believe it's um already this time of the year it's just time is really flying isn't it okay so I'm gonna keep on going with this and um Lori says making art kits today Thanks for painting both ways. I love the dark background. Yeah, you could always um, even go darker with your colors too. Um, my thing is to always just like have the brightness and that's just my style, but I do try to, um, you know, pull back a little bit sometimes, but <laughs> you know me, right? And then Kim says, I always continue to add the different colors to my brush to really create the ombre effect for layered co or color, the layered color. Oh my gosh, goodness, layer color, yes. Perfect. I love that. Um, I used to work with Kim and um, we had a, she was always so helpful when we were doing things in the art room and it was, it was just great. I loved it. And now she's, um, I believe she's still teaching art, right? Are you still teaching art, Kim? A little yellow up here. And you don't have to tell me if you don't want to online. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't uh, be so nosy. I just uh, get excited to see people I haven't seen in person for a while, and it's nice to be able to connect. Yeah, as I come down here, I'm not super worried. Um, in the club, I did a little video um, longer than my time lapse for that other one, that more um, really loose one. 
this is a way to get the background loose, but I show you how to get the petals loose and all of that, if you that's the style you prefer. But, um, oh yeah, you are. Okay, very cool. Okay. Um, but I know that, you know, everybody's got limited time, so I just put it in the club, and if any of those people have any questions, they can let me know. Yeah, um, it's fun to have your own artwork art room for the for the elementary school but it sure is a lot of work um, I understand how that feels if any of you are teachers let me know because I taught I don't know I was in a public library for 10 years and then I switched to a school where I was at a school library for about 13 years and then in that same school I became the art teacher and that was about I think four years or so so um, I feel like I have some interesting skills, an interesting skill set that um, <laughs> I bring to this whole thing and try to help anybody that I'm with um, to get the benefit of, of what I've learned over the years. And it's fun. I really love it. I love painting and I love helping people. And so does this give you guys an idea? I'm going to fill this in because it's looking a little weird over here. Yeah, it's fun to see how things come out. You never know. And I don't know if Marta, you're still on, but I know Marta's got a lot going on. She was um, had some big things in her life, and I'd love to hear what the rest of you guys are up to. Anybody traveling right now or have something planned? I just uh, got back from Canada, and I was visiting with my mom, and you guys are probably like, she's obsessed with these lambs. I put some posts of my mom's bottle feeding these little lambs, and they are so cute. I mean, they like cry out for her and um, when it was around dinner time, but then anytime they would see, or their feeding time, anytime they would see a human, then they were like, ah, feed me. And um, she was like, yeah, they know my name. Ma, right? <laughs> so it's kind of funny. So... I, I love visiting and seeing all that stuff, but it's also nice to come home, too. All right. Let's see. Anybody have any other suggestions for colors I could add in here? What do you think? And notice how my strokes are going out, and I'm going to come back this way. So if you have any other suggestions, I could throw those in, too. Um, as I come here, I'm just coming around, and then I pull the strokes out toward the edge. And even if this is coming down here, see that little V is pointing me this direction, and this is pointing me this way, they can still blend together. Blues, teals, okay, Kim is saying, just got back from Kenosha. Oh, I love Holland! Oh! I love it. Oh, travel softball. Well, I'm sure you're very busy. Very busy. Those people um, who have their kids and that kind of thing. Summers are for traveling, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, but that's good. I mean, it's good for your kids to get out there and to see different parts of the country or the world. I always said that I was very blessed and fortunate to, to be able to travel a lot when I was a kid and to be able to see things because then you have a different perspective, especially if you can get to different countries and see what, you know, different cultures are like. That's super important. And even just different parts of the country. Um, you can tell when, when kids haven't like explored much. I would, um, I was from Canada originally and <laughs> people were like, do you guys live in an igloo? I'm like, no, I don't live in an igloo. Ah, so Lori's saying a little bit of purple in there. Yeah, that would be really pretty. I can add a little purple in there. Let's see how it goes. I got to let everything dry, though. So I think it's important, like I said, to um, let people and kids especially get exposed to different cultures. And I don't know how I got on that little subject, but... That's my soapbox for the day, and I will just get off of it. <laughs> yes, purple is beautiful. And the only thing is with, okay, so purple and yellow. If I mix purple and yellow, I'm going to get more of a muddy brown. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit. And nothing wrong with brown. We love brown. 
but I'm gonna just make sure I keep the other colors I've already put in kind of um, so they retain their color I guess is what I'm trying to say all right white in here where if you add little pops of white to blend in certain sections you're gonna get um, a little bit of brightness in that area so if say you want to get movement I want the eye to come up here and notice this sunflower. I'm going to add a little bit of white and see that's kind of drawing your eye up toward that beautiful sunflower, right? So that's one way to kind of just like think about how what you're doing with your colors and it's going to, I mean this is very, very personal how you do this and yours will turn out differently than mine will too, right? So it's just a matter of trying things out and seeing what you like. And I love, there's so many techniques to try, right? Um, do you guys feel like the sunflowers are getting lost in all this green? Because I thought that was the problem when I did it originally. I thought maybe they were going to get lost in all this green, but a lot of people seem to like that look when, they, when I posted the this or that. Um, so take a look at that post and see what you think. I mean, a lot of people are saying it looked dramatic. So maybe it's just this wildness about it that people seem to like, but I would love your input on that too. Okay, and you could, you could just keep it simple, like with, look at this beautiful section right here. I kind of like this for the bottom of the canvas, maybe the, just the black with the dark green and the other colors are still on my brush. So they're popping in there. Let's just see how that looks. And I could never stop experimenting here, right? <laughs> I'm gonna add a little bit of the bright green, but it's not um, super bright when you have it on top of that black. So we'll just see how this is looking. Maybe we'll love it, right? Maybe we'll want to add some of those other colors in there too. So, oops, I grabbed the yellow. I'm gonna put that up here a little bit and grab some more of the green. And these strokes, I said, we're going to go out toward the edges. So let me do some of that. Hmm. I look down and then I don't know if you can see my head in the little, uh, <laughs> the center of the sunflower. <laughs> Gotta be goofy, right? Who's with me? You guys having fun today? Goofy, goofy, goofy. Why not? Right? Love it. Dramatic and loose style. Love it. Yes. Agreed. I totally agree, Lori. Might as well um, try things out and experiment and see what we like. Because this painting is an excellent way to de-stress. Um, I had no idea that I would love painting so much. Um, I just wanted to do something different after working in libraries for so many years. And instead of all of them going straight, I'm going to make some of them go a little bit wonky here, but then mostly they're to the corner there and down. And so when I started trying to learn how to do paintings and all that stuff and um, figure out the different um, mediums, like I tried watercolor, I tried all different kinds. I did clay, I did all kinds of stuff because I was getting my certification for for teaching, but um, it was a great way for me to figure out what I love the best. And I love acrylic because it's so forgiving and it's so much fun. And hi, Erica, good to see you. Um, and you know, if, if we can't do it, love, um, it's a little sad. So it's nice to try something out, see if you like it. And then, um, you know, I really, I was looking everywhere to learn how to do stuff. So I was kind of like self-taught in some ways because I was taking grad level classes with all these artists, these high school art teachers. And I was like, oh, um, yeah, I'm just going to be a little pretender for a little while. But eventually I figured it out. And, um, you know, the rest is, as they say, is history. Right. And um, so I figured it out. But then I learned where um, I could get information. And I'm hoping to pass that on to anybody else who's listening because why should you have to do it the hard way I'm here to help you so if you ever have any questions about mediums or um, painting mediums or anything like that especially with acrylic I, I would love to help you now do you guys like the darker to the lighter what do you think are we loving that I kind of love it I kind of love it 
I'm going to add a little bit of lightness here and there down here just to make sure it's um, has that continuity. You know, I didn't think I was going to do anything new today, but here we go. <laughs> I love how, yes, the picture fits perfectly in the top of the sunflower. Hello. 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 Yes. <laughs> Erica. I'm sorry. I was going like this with my hands. You couldn't tell. <laughs> Welcome to the goofy world of Karen Seawalk. That's me. A little goofy, right? I try. I have fun with this stuff. All right, let me see. All right, so we're going to add some little bits of white up here. I'm not, I haven't rinsed off my brush the whole time. And by the way, this is like a number six, number eight. And I'm going to get a little white on here. This is pretty dry, so I'm not going to put straight, if I put straight up white, well, it might be okay, actually be okay but I'm going to mix it so it's it's not super duper stark okay I'm going to add a little bit more layering in here I know we talked about a little purple I might add some purple down here Lori just because I feel like that's dark and dramatic and then we're kind of going to this lighter area at the top right so kind of fun um so how long did that take me let me see how long have I been on 21 minutes to do that whole background and it's pretty dramatic right um, I'm going to rinse. No, let me grab some purple. Hang on. I'll be right back. Purple, purple. Uh, let's see. This is like, that might be okay. This one's a deco art diazonine purple. I could do a magenta. Hmm. All right. I've got this one. This one's like a violet pansy. Okay. What do you guys think? Do you have a preference? I feel like I should go for the dark. I'm going to do that. Okay. Back to my sunflower. <laughs> I think I need to place myself right there. Okay. Here we are. How silly am I, right, you guys? If you think I'm silly, uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me one of those little hearts. I would love it. Love it, love it, love it. Give me a little heart if you can see my little, my face. Okay. So a little purple for Lori. Lori wanted to see some purple in this to go with the... Um, complementary color of the yellow. So let me rinse off my brush here. Okay, let's see. You like the dark purple. Okay, Erica. Gotcha. We're going to do a little dark purple. So I washed off my brush and we're going to do a little bit down here. Oh yeah. We could even pull this purple into those leaves, but we're going to just um, go around first and just see how it this is going to work. I love it. It's so dark and mysterious, right? Don't you love it? Ooh, look at that. So, and it does help to kind of separate. Um, I'm going to just pull this up a little bit right in here because it looks like it's like boop, boop, two separate things. But now we have a little bit of that purple coming up there. Yes. As long as it's dry and it doesn't blend with that yellow, then you get a really nice effect. So definitely a, um, a great suggestion. So if you're in the Artsy Moon Paint Club, I did put our what this for you guys a little early. I know you weren't expecting it, but I do plan to have a bunch of bonuses for you next month. So um, don't feel like you're not going to get anything in August. I will definitely get you some stuff, um, some extra bonuses. You know me, I love to over deliver and make sure you guys get everything you need. I'm going to be working on some more fall paintings and getting all that stuff for you so you're you're good to go all right how do you guys like the purple you like it I didn't add a ton but it's just enough to give it a little more depth down here maybe a little bit more um, let's see let me just put a little bit like in between some of these petals just for a little emphasis yeah you don't even really notice it but it does somehow um, Make it look a little more interesting, right? Okay, so we'll do a little bit over here. And we'll give it a little curve around this. These are good for movement lines also. And I know Kim was saying let's do a little bit of teal. So I'll add a little bit of teal in there too. I think that would look beautiful. Get some teal. Yep, teal. Here we go. All right, so a little teal, and you could do any color background with this if you wanted. So it's really up to you however you want to do it. So a little teal, and then we'll just do a few more of those little strokes in here. Yeah, I love it. I love teal, one of my favorite colors. All 
And if you want the whole painting, um, if you're in my club, you'll be able to get that. I've already put the video in and the supply list is there. The photo directions are coming in the next few days, probably. And um, for anybody else, I just hope I can, if you need any suggestions for um, painting tips or anything like that, let me know what you're struggling with. I would love to help you. All right. Oh, I love the oh, I love the deal. Yes, it is good to be silly, right, Stephanie? Yes, absolutely. Um, that's me. I'm silly. Um, sometimes I've been accused of being too serious, but today I'm a little silly with the sunflower, right? Silly sunflowers. Okay. I think we are going to, I'm going to stop before I just go crazy with this because I just could keep on going and going. Um, sometimes you don't want to overdo it, right? But it is fun and I hope you had a good time seeing how to do that background. You could do this with almost any subject and it would be kind of fun to do, right? Um, if I feel like I did lose this, maybe I will just put a little bit of black in there. I did have some black when I was painting that background. Let me loosen that up a little bit. Pull and twist. Even though this is a bigger brush, I can kind of find that stem. Okay. The stem kind of got lost with all that green. I think that's the only negative thing with that green is that the stem might get lost a little bit. So you could always come over it with the black. I think we'll just widen it up slightly here. And I'll put a little bit of um, that green in here, that bright green, it's probably going to get dark because of that black, but I think it's a little more easy to find now, right? A little bit over here. Maybe I'll lighten it up with a little bit of white. And if you lose, lost your stems too, you could always do that as well. we go. You know, it's, it's kind of loose. It's kind of flowy and you get that little bit of a uh, Van Gogh feeling. Not that I'm comparing myself to Van Gogh, obviously, but um, I call this one sunflowers to go to G O G H. Right. Fun. All right. Thanks guys for hanging out with me for a few and I hope you have a great day and keep painting okay and uh, i'd love to see anything that you paint it would be so nice as i drop things and knock them off onto the floor have a good one bye